What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the TNEC cast, episode 28. Look at us coming back two, two, two weeks in a row. We got things <laughs> all stuck back in the row. Yeah. Back on regular schedule. I'm your man, Shaw, with my brother, the Weapon K, and we are the TNEC cast. Okay, how you feeling? I'm feeling amazing, G. Listen, I'm ready to get this thing on the road. Uh, we're both in off season, so we about to be fresh. We about to be hype. We about to get after it. So let's go, man. Um, this episode we're going to be talking about the importance of rest and recovery, because you have young bucks out there, including myself, that I kind of get get told to sit your ass down, relax. So from a coaching standpoint, how important is rest and recovery? So real quick, before I tell you how important that is, something that's also is important, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Poor Very favorite. important to do. And so, so with that being said, so rest is when you build muscle. That's point, that's, you know, that's point blank period. And your body needs rest so it can perform optimally. Because whether you're a competitor or you're on the lifestyle side or you're athlete just just if you are somebody that is active if you want to maintain that without getting sick without getting hurt you need to rest your body needs rest rest is a part of progress and that's when you know you you know it's your body is healing repairing uh, growing while you sleep or what or not so, so there's the sleep aspect of or of this like the true rest day because you get in your mind that, oh, my God, if I'm not working out, I'm not doing cardio, I'm losing. You're actually gaining because that's when that's when the really thing, things happen. So if you work out, you know, five or six days a week, whether you have a split of, you know, because Kyrie and I are kind of talking about this, whether your split is, you know, like three, three days on one day off, you know, five straight, two off, six straight, one off, whatever your split may be, it is important to take that rest seriously. It is important to take that rest seriously because that's how you prevent injury. That's how you improve performance. That's how you prevent burnout because you let your body reset. You let your body, and it's important that if you're on for a while to take a week off to really let your body fully rest. I'm telling you, if you've been doing things the right way, and as long as during that week you don't eat crazy, you're not going to lose anything. You're not going to get worse. You're going to come back to the gym refreshed, reinvigorated, stronger. That's what a lot of people don't realize. You come off of that rest and that those 50s feel light because your body's actually healed up and, you know, and, and ready to go. So just from that coach, from the coaching standpoint, I'm always telling you, you got to rest. You got to rest. Slow and it's funny because then I got to, you know, Kyrie and I both know this because we get told this Marco, yay, slow down. Yeah. chill out you're good you know so but but it's, it's told for your benefit and then the thing is the key is to actually listen to that if your coach is telling you hey you need to rest hey you need to slow down they're telling you that for your benefit you see what i'm saying because think about at the end of the day your coach actually it's more beneficial for your coach's uh, uh pocket or their practice their business how you want to word it for you to be out there and doing stuff you see what i'm saying it's because like the more the more I'm out there, the better the better better it is for James. The more Kyrie is out there, it's the better it is for Kyle. Mm-hmm. But then the product gets diluted because you're just going too hard. You're not resting and recovering, and you go from this, and then your trajectory starts going the other way. So that your coach is telling you that if you have a if you have a good coach, because they care and because that's their job. So that's the, that's, you know, that's kind of like the coaching angle. So Kyrie's going to cover kind of like from the athlete side, the mindset side, you know, about how you really need to attack rest. Right. Because you, you have to attack rest. And this is another thing where, yeah, it takes a lot of discipline to go to the gym, eat your food, but it's also a lot of discipline to sit down, <laughs> calm down because, and this is another thing you say it a lot. Nip said it. My Kyle said it. It's a marathon, not a sprint, G. It's a marathon. The whole key of, you know, being in bodybuilding is longevity. Longevity, longevity, longevity. And sometimes you do have to sit down and let your tendons um recover. Let your let your like that tennis elbow you got chill out. You know, you touched on a, a deload week. Yes. And it's not even about not going to the gym that week. It's about just reducing your volume by like, let's say 30, 40%. 
You can still go in there, get a juicy pop, you know, just for like your sanity. Because some people use this for therapy, right? So go in there, get a juicy pop for the ladies. They're going to love it. All right? Go get your gym selfies in, whatever have you. But just don't push it. Treat it like a peak week workout. That's kind of how I, if I uh, do take that uh, deload. It's like I treat it like a peak week workout. You get blood in the muscle. You touch and go, touch and go. Every exercise, touch and go. Stay away from the grinders. Um, I wrote this down. If you don't need rest, work harder. Ooh. Super nugget. If you don't <laughs> need rest, work harder. Because um, the threshold you kind of want to, it's like a balancing act, right? Because you don't want to work too hard over here and just like fall off the wagon and be like, yeah, I can just keep going or not work hard at all. And not uh, and not properly recover or whatever have you. You have to you have to balance this work rest ratio to whatever your work ethic is. Because let's be honest, working hard at the gym is a skill. You have to constantly sharpen that. You don't just throw a kid in there and be like you know train hard. They don't know what that means yet. It's just constantly you know pushing your numbers, pushing your limits every single time you're in the gym. Um, one thing that I do want to ask you on the coach standpoint is nutrition on rest days. Do you say, hey, you're not moving a lot, so I'm, I'm pooling your carbs? Or since it's a rest day and your body needs to recuperate, do you add or do you just keep everything the exact same? So that's a, that's a really good question. And, and really, it, it's really athlete dependent. Mm. So or, or lifestyle. So, so you got to have you know, with, with, you know, with the different things, my lifestyle clients, I keep it the same um, <clears throat> unless they are really active and they're more, uh, they're more aggressive, I'll say towards, towards their goals and, you know, and things like that. That's when we start to play with having, um, off day nutrition versus, you know, work, you know, workout nutrition and prep, it stays the same, you know, um, I really, cause it just, it just makes sense because you're, cause especially with, the way we work and how that deficit is when we're coming down and getting ready for a show, you need that fuel because that fuel sets you off for month and sets you off for the week. So if I, you know, so I, I just keep it the same. I just keep it the same. There's no, I don't add to it. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, now, now we're kind of in this area now because we've been doing this long enough where you can mess around a little bit with the rest of the nutrition because now our bodies are used to kind of this this um, being in the sport and, you know, everything like that. So that, that adds a little bit of a different spin to it, mm -hmm. but cause now, even though I'm older than you, you know, with the mature muscle, you know, and like I said, again, kind of, I'm sorry to, you know, be redundant, but the fact that we've been doing it and, and you know, obviously I'm using me and Kyrie because they're the ones that are on here, but there's thousands of us bodybuilders that are at the three, four, five year, more should say thousands, but you know, a lot of us mm -hmm. at the three, four, five year mark and our bodies are different. So that's where, like, when you're talking about rest, the rest needs change yeah. as you, as you, as you, um, you know, move through. But, you know, rest day, for the most part, we keep the nutrition the same mm. for the most part. Because it, it and, and, but again, I mean, it is like how we talk about it. there's a thousand ways, it's, you know, skin a cat. Sorry, Peter. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, it, but you, you, as a coach, you really have to let it be athlete dependent. Because if I notice that somebody is not eating enough on their rest day, because in their mind, they think, oh, I'm not working out, so I need to eat less. I got to push their food a little bit. So then that way, if that kicks in, they're eating the right amount versus, because okay. you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So you have to, you, 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 this is why is so important as a coach to really get to know your clients. Mm. That's why, you know, not, it's not a shameless plug, but that's why we require that 90 days. Well, I can't learn you in a month. I mean, certain, sometimes I can, but I can't learn you in a month. Four weeks is we're just getting started. Mm. I'm just learning your habits and everything like that. So that's what, so for example, I can't say, I can't in four weeks all of a sudden say, Hey, well, we're going to, we're going to do this kind of nutrition. No, I'm still learning how your body reacts to everything, your activity level, things like that. So that's, um, you know, where it comes down to each athlete, it's a little bit different for the ones, because you know what they do, you know what I'm saying? You start mm -hmm. to learn, you know what they, so then I know, I was, cause there's some people I'll give them less food cause I know they're going to cheat. 
there's, you know what I'm saying? I just, yeah. I just know that they are, but then it ends up working out because we, we, we still, you know, you know, after the seven days, we still remain in a deficit. Mm -hmm. There's some people, you know, that I give more food because I know they think less is better. So they're, they're, they're skipping out on meal five. So I, and I start to figure out, you know, these, 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 these little, little nuances, mm -hmm. the whole coach we know and thing, people like, how the hell do you <laughs> doing it for a while? But, um, but yeah, that, I mean, that was, that was a great question because, and because like, I, I'll just give Kyle's an example. This is, and I, this is me using Kyle as an example. So I don't, I'm not saying he would say this, but Kyle may say, oh no, I always change up the rest of the nutrition. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? But he knows what he's doing because it's a part of how he, how he operates. You see what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, rest, nutrition, all these different things, we're training our body to do certain things. Now, as the coach, while we may have our foundation, it's important for us to adjust to the athlete and not just try to say, I'm going to train everybody the way I train Kyrie. Like, yes. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to train everybody the way I train Isaac. You can't do that because there are some of, some of us. So Kyrie and I are the, and there's a lot of us, Kyle's the same way. My coach is the same way in terms of as at, because we're, we're all athletes as well. Um, you can just give us the plan. You don't got to worry. You know we're going to do the work. Yeah, pretty much. You know, you, you can, <laughs> we're like the autopilot people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here you go. And we're going to, we're going to do it. You know, but then you have the other side of it. There's more people you got to kind of massage into it and you got to, you know, and, and, and then, you know, every everything in between. So that's where, you know, and it also takes discipline because if you change up that rest day nutrition, are you gonna have the discipline to not go too far either way? Yeah. That's why, you know, it's, cause I've, I've done it before. I've done it for myself. I've done it for, for you know, for, uh, you know, for, I've done it mainly for, uh, for lifestyle people. Mm -hmm. I stay away from it, you know, on, um, on the competition side. But with lifestyle, you know, I've done it. So basically, you know, as we're doing their nutrition, literally, they'll get two sets of nutrition, workout day, off day. But then, the, but then the other thing is because some people, now where it is effective, and I'm gonna toss it back to you, where it is effective is if I have somebody that works out like three days a week, because yes. their activity level is a little bit lower. Mm -hmm. So then once we kind of get through the first phase of them just kind of getting used to eating right and working out consistently and everything like that, if we stay at the three days a week, they 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 will get two sets of nutrition, mm -hmm. like clockwork, Un unless unless it or the caveat is, is where is it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it and we're able to keep the same and we're still getting the result, yeah. then I'll leave it. But usually I like my go-to on that when it comes down to it, is um having two sets so then the way they know if they're going to work out that day because the thing is because i always tell people and you know this i tell people so if you're working out three i don't care what three days a week you're working out could be monday tuesday wednesday monday wednesday friday but i don't care what it is just your nutrition is the one way that day and the other you know the other days that you're not doing anything you know so that way they know and it's and it works it's very effective very very, very effective so i'll i'll i'll, I'll ask you what makes rest so tough for you? Um, I guess ego. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you're just sitting on the couch and then all of a sudden you'd be like, all right, let me sit down. Let me watch some YouTube. And then you, you watch a video of Keon Pearson getting after in the gym. You'd be like, man, I could do that right now. <laughs> or some C-bum. He's like killing it in the gym. You'd be like, man, you know, you get motivated. That's another thing where you're right. It avoids burnout because I'm excited for the next gym session. You see what I'm saying? It's a sick mind game of just like, mm -hmm. you watch, it's like a, a bow and arrow, right? You sit down, at the, uh, you sit down, you watch a YouTube, you get motivated, you get motivated, motivated, and then next day's fucking leg day, poof, ready to go, yeah. right? Um, yeah. And also like, this is what I've learned in the last few, uh, few weeks, really, a few weeks, more like two week and a half, it's like, bro, when you're rest day, truly sit down and enjoy your family. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, unplug from social media. You know, sit down, watch a movie with the wife. Um, go get ice cream with the kids. You know, if it's in your meal plan, whatever have you. And work it in there. And that's, it's truly, like, because it's like truly just like resetting everything. Because, you know, especially in prep, 
don't get ice cream if you're on prep, but it's like go and spend time with your family because you can't go out to dinner with them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's a different you're type of, limited. you're being selfish for like three days and then one day you're just like, I'm yours. What do you want to do? Walk around a, 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 a boutique and look at, you know, flowers all day. It's like, okay, cool. You know, and it's all about that balance. Um, what else was there? Uh, what, what else keeps me out? Just like, yo, like someone's working right now and I'm not. And that's that, that's a, you know, that's, yeah, that's a, oof. yeah, that's a, like somebody, somebody's on the field right now getting after it. And I'm sitting here watching YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Watching the TNDC cast. Right? <laughs> on Tuesdays, let's get it. 7 a.m. You know the vibes. <laughs> yeah. What keeps you from the gym? I mean, what uh, what's um, what keeps you from taking your rest? rest part? Yeah. I I just so so I think the number one thing is, and it's something that we talked about. Even though I know it is not true, the number one thing is I think I'm losing something. I know I'm not. I ah. know for fact I'm not, mm -hmm. but I cannot help but feel it because. When you during the week when you're working out and con, like you get random pumps mm. you know you just out of nowhere you might not be eating for an hour and a half so it's all of a sudden just you know like yeah you know <laughs> on rest day it's like i mean yeah you're you know you're still eating and still fueling but you just feel like and then you haven't done anything for like two then three then four hours and just like my gains are going to go, you know, and yeah. I know they are not, I know, I know it. I, I absolutely know it, but you know, we're, we're, we're humans. Those emotions kick up and I'm like, man, all right, well, maybe I should, I, you know, I'll think about it, you know, maybe I'll do it, you know, and I won't do it because I know it, but I'll think about it. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, uh, that's one, um, a couple of them will piggyback off of you. Definitely the whole aspect, especially during prep. I'm like, man, somebody, even the growth too, but I'm like, man, somebody else is working. You know, shout out to my, all my brothers, McCaddy, you know, uh, JT, Mario, um, a Quinn. I, I'm trying to Murph. You know, I'm, trying, I'm not, not going to leave. I'm not trying to leave nobody out. But like, because we're all, all of us, you know, we you know how this is, we're like a community. Yeah. So like, so for example, you might be on a rest day and you see two of them posting up a workout and you yeah. and you're like, how I'm going to beat them because they working and I'm resting, you know, and you start, you know, and, and you, um, you know, you go through that and then, let me see what else is tough. What else is tough is because you get in such a habit. Like the mm -hmm. gym is a habit, cardio is a habit. You know, you get addicted to it because, and you know this, it's easy for us to go to the gym. Mm -hmm. Like, and I don't, I don't, uh, look, don't get me wrong. There are days when I gotta go and I don't wanna go, but I'm, a, but, but I'm addicted to it anyway. So it's like, I'm just gonna go. I've never had a bad workout. And when I say what I what I mean by that is, I always feel good when I leave the gym because at least I did something. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like I never. Now I have felt shitty after workout. I like, man, that wasn't a quality workout. Things like that. But I've never. I would rather do. I'd rather have a shit workout than no workout. Bingo. You know what I'm saying. And and, and hey, look, those of you guys that are listening to me. That does not mean go put a bunch of shitty workouts together. What I'm saying is, not every workout is going to be the best workout understand that don't go for the just, just go for doing your work you know what i'm saying because there's just going to be those days you're not feeling it and you're kind of going through the motions but you, but you did it sometimes there are cases where just doing it is is, is enough but um yeah, those are the things that, that make it tough and i'm actually going to take this i'm going to lead it into the um you know about kind of like uh, resting after you you know we're we're sick had an injury, you know, everything like that and how important that's where it's really important so you know i was down really total total almost about 17 days 10 of those days were really really bad mm -hmm. 10 of them were really really bad so i went 10 pound 10 pounds under my stage weight so and uh i don't know if uh some of my clients i ain't gonna name them but that that saw me my first week back i had to warn i had to warn my mom because my mom hadn't seen me i had to warn people like hey when you see me I'm pretty skinny right now, so don't be alarmed. I'm okay. And they look, they all look like, oh my God. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because of it. Now, now, guys, you know, you know, now I'm talking to the to the to, to the audience. You gotta remember when you're stage weight, you're already pretty quote unquote skinny, lean, whatever word you want to use. So when you drop down below that, 
And now you got to remember my stage weight, you know, I'm in the mid 150s. So I'm dropping 10 pounds below that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, I, so you can see it. Thankfully, I'm starting to fill back out, you know, and everything like that. But the way I said it, the reason why I feel great, number one, give glory to God. But the reason why I feel great is because I've rested. It's because I haven't, because I'm feeling good. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I, I haven't, I, I've made a promise to myself and to my coach, nothing this month. Mm -hmm. That's why I feel great. That's why I was able to expedite this weekend and not be dead tired after it. You know what I'm saying? Like, so when you are, if you're coming back from an injury, right? It's the same thing as coming back from being sick or whatever. You need to give your time body, you, you need to give your body time to heal. Just because you feel good does not mean you're healed yet. And that's how you have setbacks. That's how you go from, you know, oh, this is going to be a 12 week process to it's a 16 week process. Yeah. Because you just, you know, you try to jump into the deep end. So like when I go back and do that first workout, my first week of workouts are going to be very uh, I don't want to say minimal, but they're just going to be, I'm just going to be moving some weight. That's it. Just get my body used to it. Trying to, you know, kind of get a feel for what weight is too much. You know, just kind of just get a, get a feel of my body, let muscle memory come back. Week two, I'll, and then basically I'm going to Christian, you know, week two, we'll, we'll do a little bit more. Week by week three, I'll probably be at that point where I'm like, okay, let's, let's kind of see what we can do. But the key is I've rested for so long before I started doing that. That's the same thing. You hurt your knee. And like, I'm not talking surgery wise, you know, you sprained your knee, you know, so you're down for two weeks, not being active. You have to don't jump right back in and do what you were doing. You come back off of no matter what kind of sickness, whether it be, I'm not going to, I'm not going to name them because I can get the video flag, but you know, something that's not quite as severe, but it puts you down for three to five days, just because you feel better. It doesn't mean go back and be Superman. Yeah. You, you, you can be Clark Kent for a few days and then you could be Superman, but you have to allow your body to heal. And that's something that took me a while to really actually learn. And I thank my clients for that because I appreciate it so much to, 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 to you guys, excuse me, our clients. I appreciate that so much to you guys that I was like, all right, you got, you can't be a hypocrite. Bingo. Yeah. Can't be a hypocrite. So I've, I've, I've been a lot better about, you know, resting like with this. I'm really proud of myself because most everybody that knows me, I bet you if they would have took a pool, they would have thought I've been working out by now. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking. <laughs> I mean, we, just, <laughs> we, just, we just being real. You know, September, well, as we were recording on September 15th, most people would have thought that they would, and I wouldn't have been mad at them. I wouldn't have been mad at them. You know what I mean? But I'm, I'm really, really, really focused because... I want to make sure I don't want to have any setbacks. Cause when you were down the way I was down, you don't ever want to feel like that again. Yeah, bingo. Like you know, what I mean? like that's just Kyrie knows because he, he, you know, we, you know, talked a little that the what I commanded, yeah. and I was, I mean, I was messed up. You know what I'm saying? So it's important because like I'm speaking from experience with my like direct experience with myself, with uh, family members, with athletes, with lifestyle clients, with everybody. That rest after you feel better is so important. For example, if you were down for five days, which is in, in, in the grand scheme of things, depending on what it was, five days isn't that bad. Because that's like that's almost like a rest in and of itself. Mm -hmm. Rest for three or four days after that to allow your body to get right. Because just because you feel better, again, like I said at the beginning of this, just because you feel better doesn't mean you are better. You can, you can, because you can do more damage because your body's not ready. And then you ask it to do a whole bunch of stuff that it can't do. And then you revert, you, you might go back and be even worse. Or you may create a whole set of new problems. I always tell people, like, if they feel a twinge, right? I'm like, hey, take, take the day off. You know, you, I'd rather you take, I'd rather we, we schedule two days off than you end up having to be off for four to six weeks because you hurt yourself. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And that's, and so I'm going to use a football uh, reference. Most injuries happen in the second half. Do you know why? Is a rhetorical question. It's because people are tired. They're fatigued. That's when you get hurt. So your body, just because you feel great, and it's more of a mental thing, but you know you feel great, your body is still fatigued. So it is primed to be hurt again. It's not ready to go do, you know, do those things. So you rest a little bit, even if it's two days. You rest a little bit, give your body a chance to really bounce back and then 
Look, sometimes going slow just means take one or two days and then you can go. It just depends on what you're coming off of. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? But it's important. It's beyond important to make sure that you're listening to your body. It, and, and, that, and, it, and then it goes back to something that we always talk about with discipline. If you were doing all the right things leading up to it, your body's going to bounce back. Your body's not going to betray you. You see what I'm saying? So that's why. It's so you never know when you're going to go. I had no idea I was going to go down when I did. I mean, think about it. Do you plan on going down? Yeah. No, it just, it just happens. Whether God forbid it's a car accident, whatever, whatever it could be. Nobody's saying, oh, well, today, I'm, you know, today this bad thing is going to happen. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you don't you don't do that. So you every day it's a good, real shit as you know, kind of just coming out as we're talking about it every day you are preparing for and it's almost inevitable. Nobody's going to live 75, whatever life expectancy right now, 75, 77 years old and not have a bad day or get sick or have something happen. We all have something happen to us. So what we're doing leading up to it makes it so we can bounce back quicker. Like, that's why I know my lifestyle is the reason why I am where I am right now. You know what I'm saying? The fact that I tell, you know, you know, all these different things, because there's a lot of people that, were down the way I was down. And then it took them a long time. We're talking months to get back right just because what they were leading up to before, they weren't really taking care of themselves. Mm. So taking care of yourself, and we'll pass it to Kay to kind of say his piece on this, taking care of yourself is important because it helps with the bounce back. Taking care of yourself doesn't mean you're never going to get sick. That's, that's a, that don't, Look, I don't care. You can have the strongest immune system in the world. If you get in, if you're in an area where you're inundated with a certain germ, you're going to get sick. Now, you might not get sick as the next person, but you, but but the other thing is, you will more than likely bounce back faster. Yep. So it's not all. It, it is about the prevention piece, but some things you can't prevent. So now it's like if it happens to you, one, it won't be as bad or as intense, whatever word you want to use, and you'll be able to bounce back faster. That's now. Granted, while my stuff was intense. I was able to bounce back fat. Cause let me tell you something. If you would have asked me when I was in the middle of that, oh, on September 15th, you're going to be good. I was like, I don't know, brother. I don't know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, you know, grace God, I'm here. I feel great and everything like that. But again, now I really am going to toss it. I feel great because I have not overdone it. Mm. That's why I feel great right now. Okay. What's your standpoint on, you know, working out after being a, sick or injury and how you know rest plays plays a role in it i actually want to co-sign everything you just said right because i you, you you hit the nail right in the head of establishing hey bro just because you took seven days off doesn't mean you can just go full rambo mode in the gym slow down <laughs> longevity you want to be in the game you want to lift weights you want to be healthy for as long as possible slow down you're going to have your time it's inevitable chill out right one thing that i do want to throw in there is managing so you want to cheat rest days as like cheat meals right you have to manage them you have to schedule them just because you don't feel like it doesn't mean that i'm listening to my body you see what i'm saying here so it's just like okay my split it's a four day split or no four day five day split and it's a three day on one day off right that one day is scheduled. So every three days, I take that one day off. It's not like, oh, I, feel, I don't feel good today. Okay, different. I don't feel like it today. Sucks. This is your goal, bro. Get up and go do it. Same thing with cheat meals. You know, other people are like, eh, yeah, I'll just go out to eat, you know, whatever. This is like my first time this week. And then all of a sudden, it's the second time this week and da-da-da-da. If it's not, man, what you say, manage and monitored, it doesn't yep, matter. Yep, yep. Yeah, manage yep. and monitor. Monitor it. Track it. Hey, when was the last time I had a cheat meal? Uh, yesterday, fat ass. Chill out. <laughs> yeah, the, the Chick-fil-A is going to be there tomorrow. All right? I promise. So also just be very mindful of like, hey, am I, am I, am I having a moment of weakness or do I truly need this rest day? That's something you just need to be mindful of. And honestly, and I'm glad you brought it up because that's where discipline comes in. Because mm-hmm. you're being, you have to be honest with yourself. Oh, I'm sore. So what? You're supposed to be sore. You just started out. You know what I mean? 
Like, so, and then, so, cause when we talked about managing the monitor, we were talking, we were both talking about growth, our, our growth season and in your growth season, you do need to take advantage of being able to have some things that you can't have during prep, you know, but you have to manage and monitor it. Mm-hmm. Now me, I'm just being a little bit redundant to back up what Kyrie was saying, but that does not mean, cause if you, so when your coach asks you, okay, so for example, they say you get three untracked meals, right? What were your three untracked meals? You should be able to write, you know, tell what it is. You know what I mean? You say, oh, I had this, I had this, and I had this. Okay, cool. That's fine. Well, you got to change this one because you're coached. You, you, even when you're in growth, you're still being coached. Yep. Don't think that means it's just, oh, I can just do what I want. So now if you're like, well, um, uh, that tells me as a coach, you didn't have three on track. You had about five or six, if not more. If you can't say when you had them and, you know, and all these different things. And then that's when shit starts to spiral out of control. You know what I mean? Because it, it's, 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 it's like, just like Kyrie says, your rest day is scheduled. You know what I mean? So when we're setting up your programs, that's why you got to, you know, and look, we all have, I should say we all have family. We all, if you're an adult in America, you're busy. Mm-hmm. Point blank, we all got something going on. Good, bad, or indifferent, we all got something going on. You got something that's going to um, be a hurdle to getting to the gym or getting nutrition, right? all these different things. If, so if you really want it, you know, you'll hurt of that hurdle. P- point blank, period. That's, that's you know, what, what it comes down to. But, um, you, you know, you have to monitor it and you have to hold yourself accountable to it. You see what I'm saying? So if you tell your coach you're going to take two rest days, take two rest days. And then, you know, if you, that's what you, you know, and you say you're going to take one here, one here, because when your coach is developing your plan, your nutrition, your everything like that, it's based off of that agreement. So if now if you're doing all this other stuff, you can't be mad that your results aren't there because you're not following the plan. Mm -hmm. Even though you may think you are, I'm still working out. Da, da, da. That's where monitor and manage comes in. We're we're adults. You see what I'm saying? You have to, because and again, it's accountability. Like on the coach's part, if I don't have, if I if I don't give you the tools, I can't hold you accountable to something I did not give you the tools for. Mm-hmm. That actually was a conversation that I had with a client when we were kind of going over some stuff. And we went a little bit more nitty gritty. It's like, see, now, and I said to her, I was like, now I can hold you accountable for ABC because now I gave you the tools to do such things. You know, if you don't get it, that's where, you know, where this is where guys, you know, guys and gals, if you have a coach, this is where you can hold that coach accountable. Like, well, you didn't give me the tools, give me the tools. So now, hold, and now you can hold me accountable to it. And that's why, again, to go back to it, monitor and manage. You got to monitor and manage everything. Yeah. That's what, you know, one of the things I'll, I'll say it like this. I love when people tell me they eat healthy. Eating healthy also is the amount that you eat. Because whether you want to believe it or not, we'll leave restaurant salads out because that's an easy one to overeat on. You can overeat on salads. It's, t- it's a tough thing to do, but well, if you're adding a bunch of crap in, but while it sounds like a tough thing to do, if you are supposed to be at 1500 calories and you eat 2000 calories worth of salad, you're going to gain weight. Yeah. And I'm using that as an example, because some I know people that only eat salads and they wonder why they're gaining weight. It's like, because how much that, that dressing, whoo, yep. that's two, three hundred <laughs> calories yeah. right there. Cause you know, you letting Jesus take the will. I know you're not mm-hmm. measuring it. You know what I'm saying? I, I, you know me, I, I'm not trying to go too far off on a tangent, but this is why all these things are important though. They're important. Have the rest days. You know what I'm saying? It's okay to have your refeeds and your cheat meals as long as you're manager, managed and monitored. And talk if you have a coach, talk with your coach so they know. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like, you know, um, just gave uh, somebody, I just don't like putting people out there, you know, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's somebody, re, like, like an impromptu refeed yesterday, and she told me exactly what they had. So I know. And so my first question was, how did it affect you? Did you see a different, you know, everything yeah. like that? So we're able to, you know, to work. And that's why she's a pro. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, go, it goes, you know, hand, 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 uh, hand in hand. So sorry to go off on a tangent on that, but you brought up a damn good point. So, you know. <laughs> <what I mean. laughs> but no, like, I like what you said. I ain't got nothing more to say. It's all data at the end of the day. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? This is more of the, uh, more of the, more of the so of the bodybuilding of just like data. Whenever you eat, uh, you know, a double cheeseburger from Five Guys, and you have regular fry, it's data on how you're going to look afterwards. You know, this is further down the line um, of like deep in the prep where it actually affects your body. Um, 
lifestyle, not so much. It's just depending on if you feel like shit afterwards. You know what I mean? When you just feel just like sluggish and stuff like that, then it's just like, hey, you know, it's cool to have that once a month, you know, every other month, but you want to find something that agrees with your body, that your body can handle, and you don't feel like crap the next day, you know, in the gym, you just feel sluggish, you feel chunky, you know, so it's just be mindful, just take an account of everything that you're putting into your body and the amounts <laughs> and the amounts. So that's all I got for him, Isaac. You got anything else? No, I'm good. Like, uh, like always, number one, thank you for tuning in. Yep, yep. Number two, oh, I, I know Missy watches. Shout out to, uh, to Missy and her parents. She, I, we had mentioned her before, and then she, uh, she, I, I saw her this weekend because she usually helps me out with expedite when I, I expedite for NFF. And she, um, uh, she came up to me, she's like, Oh my god, you guys said my now. That, that. So, shout out to Missy. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was cool. She, she stays tapped in with us, so shout out, um, to her. Um, but yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that's really it, man. Take this, take this resting serious. Cause we talk about a lot of things. This is when you really should take serious mm -hmm. and, you know, like comment, subscribe, and thank you. That's all I got. We'll see you guys next Tuesday. Take it easy.